Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 4, Lesson 2, Implementing Interfaces. In our last lesson, we got the door opening and closing using an interface, but at the moment, the player can open the door from anywhere in the level. We want to change the interaction interface so that the player can only interact with things when they're within a certain distance. The objectives for this lesson are to explain the line trace function and implement it into our player character. Then we'll create an interact widget. And finally, we'll implement the interactable interface onto the door and a second actor, which is gonna be a circuit breaker. And we'll set all of this up to only interact when the player is close enough. The line trace by channel node is useful in many applications in game development. It has a few inputs that we're interested in. A start vector, which is usually going to be a location. An end vector, again, a location. A trace channel, which is represented by a green node. And we haven't seen this node yet, but it's called an enumerator. And the best way to think about it is a drop-down list where you can specify what items can be contained. On the output side, it has a out hit struct and a struct is another type of variable we haven't seen yet. A structure is basically a group of variables that can all be contained in one output variable or one input variable. And we can see the results of that hit struct. There are multiple outputs contained in one variable. We'll deal with structs more in a future lesson, but this should be enough to understand what's going on here at least. And there's also a return bool which will return true if something was interacted with. And here's just a graphic to kind of understand what's going on. We have our start vector, which in our case will be our character, and there will be a line going out from the character into 3D space. And we'll represent the end of this line using the end vector. If the player rotates so that the line is interacting with another actor in the scene, the line trace by channel will return true and then we can get the output, and then the output hit will be based upon that actor that we interacted with. So we can use some of this information from the actor that we hit to set up our interaction interface. Let's head back to our project and implement this now. The first thing we'll wanna do is set up our line trace on our player character. Let's open our player character blueprint. And here where we set up this spacebar interact for testing, we won't need that anymore. So let's just delete that. And for this, we're going to be using the event tick. We want the interaction interface to be working at all times while we're playing the game. And that will allow us to be constantly checking for actors that the player can interact with. Let's drag off of here and type line trace by channel. And let's start by setting up the start vector. In our case, we want the start vector to be the current view of the screen. And in our character, this is represented by the camera. So we can take a reference to our camera and then type get world location. And this will give us the location in the world of the current view of our camera. Let's drag that into the start vector. For the end vector, we wanna do a little bit of math to find a distance in front of the camera that would represent whatever the player is currently looking at. Let's copy these. And from the camera, let's type get forward vector. And we need to identify a length of this vector that we wanna be checking. We don't want it to go indefinitely into space. So from this get forward vector, we need a multiply node. And we're going to multiply it by an integer. And we want to take this forward vector and add it to the current view of the camera. And this will be the end vector. The only thing left is we need to identify the distance that we want this to go out into the world. So in our multiply node, let's right click on this bottom pin and say convert pin to integer. And let's start with 200. And this will represent the length of the line going out from our player's view into the world. So we can promote this to a variable. And I'll just call this interact distance. 
and I want to take all of this and collapse it to a function just to keep this a little bit neater. And I'm going to call this get line trace end. And this can be a pure function. And we're not going to change the trace channel, but I just want to explain what it's doing. The trace channel currently says visibility. If we select this drop down, we can see there's two options visibility and camera. And in our BP door, under the collision section, we can see that there's a trace responses and there's visibility in camera. So we can customize which actors we can interact with using the line trace by channel. This gives you a little bit more flexibility with how this could work in your game. But for this demo, we're not going to be changing this. In our line trace by channel, we have this out hit variable. And if we pull off of this and then say break hit result, we can see a list of everything that's contained in this structure. And what we want to do in our game is check if the actor that is hit by this line trace has the interactable interface. So here on hit actor, we can type does implement interface and then find our interactable interface. And this will return true if the actor that's hit by this line trace implements the interactable interface. And we can set up a branch to have two different reactions based upon whether the actor has the interface or not. And for now, we can just drag off of this true pin and use a print string. And I'll change the text to interacting. Now, when our player gets close enough to the door, we'll see it start to print interacting to the player's screen. And when we move away, it stops printing. And just to test this, we can move close to something that doesn't have the interacting interface. And we can notice that we're not getting that print message. It's only when we're close enough to the door. But in our game, we don't want to be printing to the player's screen. We'd like to give them some type of UI element that lets them know that they're interacting with something. So let's create a widget for this. In our UI folder, let's create a new blueprint widget. And I'm going to call this interacting widget. For this, I'm going to use a vertical box. And what a vertical box does is it allows us to stack multiple elements on top of each other and they'll all be contained in one widget. Let's take two text widgets and you can see that they're stacked on top of each other. For the first one, let's just type the key that we're using to interact. And in our game, we set this up for E. In the second one, let's type to interact. And we can set both of these to be center justified. And up here at the top where it says fill screen, we can change this to desired. And now we'll have a small widget that will only take up the amount of space that we need for this interact widget. And I just wanna take my E and make it slightly larger. Now in our HUD widget, we can add that widget to it. If we type interact up in the search up here, we'll see WBP interacting widget. And I can drag that right onto my canvas. I'll click size to content and anchor it to the center. And for alignment, I'll do 0.5 on the X so it's exactly in the middle. And then I'm just gonna set it slightly below the center of the screen. I think 100 on the Y should do it. And also, I think it'd be good to give the player some representation of what the center of the screen is. You could draw your own little crosshair if you would like, if you want something custom. I like to just use a text widget and center it to the middle. 0.5 on the X and Y alignment, so it's exactly in the middle. And then for the text, I just change it. And you can use a period, but you'll notice it's not exactly in the center. There's actually a way to make a centered circle and you can do this by holding the Alt key and pressing seven on the numpad. And when you let go, it'll create a circle that will be exactly in the center. And now we can see we have a small dot in the center of the player's screen and we have our interact widget, but we only want the interact widget to be showing when the line trace is hitting something. 
back in our player character on begin play, we're creating this widget and we can just take this widget and promote it to a variable called HUD. And now we can gain access to this to hide and show that widget. So we'll create the widget, set it to a variable, and then add it to the viewport. Over here on the output of our line trace, let's delete this print string. And we'll get a reference to our HUD variable and drag off here and type interacting. And we can get a reference to that interacting widget. And here we can set visibility. And if we are interacting, so the true here, we wanna set visibility to visible. We can copy this. So if we're not interacting with something, we wanna set the visibility to hidden. And the last thing we'll need to do is in our HUD, let's set that to hidden right when the HUD is created. So now when we construct the HUD widget, we'll just set it to hidden right off the bat. In our player character, when we're interacting with something, we'll set it to visible, and when we're not, we'll set it to hidden. And we'll see when we get close enough to the door, we can now see our interact widget. And when we move away, it hides. And this only works for things that have the interactable interface. And the last thing we need to do is set it up so that now the player can interact with something when that line trace is hitting that actor. So here in our hit result, we can drag off the hit actor and promote it to a variable. We can call this interacting actor. And we can set this when we're interacting with something. And we also want to set it back to null when we're not interacting with something. Otherwise, we could interact with something and walk away, and this would still be set to the active actor, so we could end up opening the door from halfway across the map again. So with this selected, let's just press Control D to make a duplicate, and we'll drag this into the false. So when we stop interacting, we'll set this back to null. And we already have our interact action set up because we are using it for our animation montage. So we can get a reference to our player character and then get interacting actor and then type interact and we can see that start interaction message. And if we connect this after our montage, this should allow us to now interact with that actor. And remember, this does nothing if the target does not implement the required interface. So if this is null, then this will not be called. Let's compile and test this out. Now when I get close enough to my door, the interact widget will show up and I can press E and the door will open. And if I press E again when not interacting, nothing happens. But then if I get close enough and press E again, I'll close the door. And just to show this is working, I put our other actor that we create in the scene that will destroy when we interact. So if I get close enough and press E, it will destroy itself. So our interact is now currently working. The last thing we'll do is set up our circuit breaker actor that we can use in the next lesson. And for our circuit breaker actor, we can just use the other test actor that we already created. So I'm gonna change the name of this to BP circuit breaker. I'm going to change the mesh to my circuit breaker mesh. And on this mesh, I want to add a second mesh to show the position of the breaker. And for this, I'll just use a cube. And I also created a red material for this so that it sticks out to the player as it's moving. And I'll change the name of this to breaker switch. And in our interact interface, we want this to move locations based upon whether it's on or off. So we'll need a variable to hold is breaker on. And this can be a Boolean. And the same way we did our door, if the breaker is on, we want to move it in the down position. And if the breaker is off, we want to move it in the up position. And the current location it is on the Z is six. And if we put it at minus six, that's closer to the bottom. And 
And the last thing we want to do is just set this bool after we flip it. So now when we interact with this actor, if the breaker is on, we're going to flip it to the down position and set breaker off. And then if it is off, we're going to set the breaker to the up position and set breaker to on. Let's test this out. I'll take my breaker actor and I'll put one on this wall here. That way I can test to see if it's working. And when I was testing, one mistake I made was we did move it forward on the Z by two. So this needs to be represented in this vector that we're setting. Now, when I press E, it will switch locations. And we can also still open the door. So our interfaces are working correctly, but we actually want to tie some functionality to this breaker. And what I'd like for my game is to have it do a few different things. The first thing I wanted to do is turn off all the lights. The next thing I wanted to do is unlock the gate. And the third thing I wanted to do is lock these doors because we're going to create a new puzzle once the player is inside this house to get out. And there's a function of Unreal Engine called an event dispatcher that is the perfect thing to handle all of this. And we'll discuss event dispatchers in the next lesson.